101 famous poems. Sonnet The world is too much with us. William Wordsworth. Spoken and with commentary. By E. T. Hansen. is too much with us. Late and soon, getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away a sordid boon. The sea that bears her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours, and are upgathered now like sleeping flowers. For this, for everything, We are out of tune. It moves us not. Great God, I'd rather be a pagan Suckled in a creed outworn. So might I, standing in this pleasant lee, Have glimpses that would make me less forlorn, Have sight of Proteus rising from the sea, Or hear old Triton blow his wreathed horn. How to win the rat race without running it. When Wordsworth wrote this poem, the first industrial revolution was in full swing in England, and you can hear his frustrations with modern life. Amazingly, they are the same frustrations we have today. Nothing has changed, it seems, yet if you look around, Everything has changed. We have more leisure time than ever. We have better medicine and more security and are better educated. We are more active in environmental protection than ever. We live in a world of privilege, not only economic but mental and spiritual privilege, unlike ever before in history. It's true that much of our days are decided by necessity, getting the kids to school, then back home again, helping them with their homework so they can learn things they will later forget, going to work for a company we have no real relationship to other than that it gives us money, which we then give to another company we have no real relationship to in order to buy food so we will have the energy to go back to work the next day. But at the same time, we have easy access to the greatest books of wisdom ever written, There are open courses at universities and on the internet that teach us about philosophy and spirituality. There are apps that help us meditate. The variety of religions and spiritual movements we can investigate, from Christianity to Zen to New Age, is richer than ever before, and our opportunities to explore nature are just as endless. We all have parks nearby, and the woods and mountainsides are never very far. There are companies and guides that will help us wander a desert or seek enlightenment in a sweat lodge. We can expand our minds and challenge our perspectives by traveling and encountering other cultures. And if we can't travel, we can do the same thing via the internet or the library or just by talking to neighbors. In today's world, there is bound to be someone from another culture just down the street or in our spin class. Wordsworth and the other romantics fled the industrial age by walking the woods or visiting the ruins of Roman palaces in Italy. I sometimes wonder what they would do today with a smartphone. My mother and father were perpetually overwhelmed by their obligations to raise six children. But when we were alone in the car, my father would often ask me difficult questions that had nothing to do with practical things like homework and not fighting with my siblings. 
He asked me my thoughts about God, about the meaning of life, about purpose, about wisdom. He challenged me to think outside the confines of my daily life, all in a matter of minutes, on a car ride, as if he were just passing the time. And yet, those were the moments that most influenced my spiritual life. I don't believe the problem is the rat race. I believe the problem lies with our priorities, perhaps with our imagination. When we wake up in the morning, we can think with dread of all the hard work and tight schedules facing us. Or we can make plans to use our free time, mentally note our opportunities for private, still moments, and set up something for those moments that give us satisfaction. We can wake up and ask ourselves, how can I feed my soul today? The truth is, there are very few challenges in human life that a human cannot master. And the challenge of making sense out of life, of living a fulfilling life, or loving life, is a major challenge to be sure. But it is one we can all manage if we really want to. So meditate, read a sacred book, play with a dog in the park until you are both exhausted. Steer the dinnertime conversation from politics and gossip to deeper questions. Wordsworth managed it. There's no reason normal guys like you and me can't do the same in our lives. About William Wordsworth William Wordsworth, 1770-1850, was the English poet who, with Samuel Taylor Coleridge, launched the Romantic Age in English literature when they published Lyrical Ballads together in 1798. Wordsworth was born in Cockermouth, Cumberland. His father was a lawyer, and of his four siblings, his sister Dorothy was also a poet and influenced his work. In college and later in life, Wordsworth spent his holidays on extensive walking tours in Germany, Italy, Switzerland, and France, sometimes with Dorothy and Coleridge. In revolutionary France, he fell in love with the revolution and with a woman named Annette Vallon, with whom he fathered a daughter, but they did not marry. Instead, he returned to England and married his childhood friend, Mary Hutchinson, who bore him five additional children. He met Samuel Taylor Coleridge in Somerset, and the two poets became lifelong friends. In his preface to their lyrical ballads, Wordsworth wrote his famous definition of poetry as the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. It takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility. He worked for the government as distributor of stamps for Westmoreland, and received an honorary doctorate in civil law by the University of Oxford. Seven years before his death, Wordsworth was named Poet Laureate of England, an honor he only accepted on the condition that he have no duties, and thus became England's only Poet Laureate who never wrote any official verses. His poem, The World is Too Much With Us, is one of his most famous and one of the first intellectual works to criticize the woes of the modern industrial world. ¶¶